This is Scott with the UTAC Automotive Series again. We'll be covering safety today. Uh, some of the components that I'd like you to see, uh, first of all, we'll, uh, we'll cover the safety glasses. You can see I'm wearing them now. Uh, I don't always require uh, people to wear safety glasses, and the only time that I don't require them to wear safety glasses is when we're not doing anything that's a, that's a high danger factor. Um, I also wear a prescription lens glasses. They're, I've got them in my pocket here today. I'm just demonstrating these uh, because I, I wear a regular pair of glasses all the time. But you'll notice that these regular glasses don't have a protective side on them. So if I'm going to do any welding or, or using a chisel or a hammer or something, where I, there might be some metal flying around or something, I'm going to put either safety glasses on or a shield of some kind so that I'm protecting my eyes. Because your eyes, you, you can't replace them. So you always want to protect your eyes. And uh, most of this stuff that I'm going to begin, uh, be talking about uh, in the beginning here will be what we call PPE. It's a per personal protective equipment, uh, which, is, which is anything basically that you're going to wear on your body. Okay, so uh, uh, we'll begin by, uh, by talking about the gloves. Uh, there, there's mechanic gloves you can wear. You, these are a little bit old, but you can see I've, I still use some of this, this, these gloves. And, um, and also the, uh, the plastic or, or neoprene throwaway gloves. Uh, that I wear. I wear these when I'm doing like a, an extensive repair procedure. I like to put these on to protect my hands so that I don't have to keep washing my hands over and over because they'll get dry and, and they'll crack open. So I try to keep that from happening by wearing this type of a protective glove. Um, if you're working in a vat, a cleaning vat, where you're going to be cleaning some parts uh, that are, that are uh, uh, so old or dirty, you'd want to wear a real heavy glove like this. I keep these in my vat so that I can wear them all the way up my arm to protect all the way up the arm. You don't want to get any kind of material on you. Uh, it's, it's very important you wear these when you're working in a vat. Um, let's move on. Uh, we're going to stay with the PPE right now. The, the, uh, uh, the mask here, the mask protects your face in case you're spraying any kind of lubricants. Um, it's a good idea to put these on, especially if you're working around a fan. Uh, which we are today. We've got fans around in the studio right now because it's kind of warm today. So if I was going to be spraying any kind of lubricants, uh, I would want to wear these, uh, this mask so that the, the, it wouldn't be blowing into my eyes or into my face or wherever. Uh, there, there's, there's dangers inherent to that. Um, and uh, the, the last thing, uh, you can see over here I've got a little smock that, that I, well, you can buy these online. These are actually a medical type smock. And, um, uh, you can see this is kind of dirty because I'll put this one on occasionally because it's it's long sleeve, and uh, the 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 nice thing about wearing something like this when you're working in a shop is it keeps you from getting your arms and elbows so dirty because sometimes you'll be doing a job that's really, uh, you know, you know, really filthy dirty and you're going to get your arms dirty all the way up to your elbows and armpits and uh, and the gloves I mean the uh, the the smock actually helps with that. I'll button it up all the way to the top even, uh, especially when I'm wearing nice clothes like this so I won't get my nice clothes dirty or, or mess them up. You know, I try to keep my shop clean and try to keep myself clean uh, by using shop rags. I've got some blue shop rags right here. I use these in my shop as well. And uh, <clears throat> um, we, uh, you know, I, I always try to keep my hands as clean as possible so that I don't actually smear anything on me or, uh, you know, do, and, and also if you keep, if you keep your shop floor clean and uh, that's kind of a safety component as well because if you spill an oily oil in a, uh, on the floor, you're, you're ten, you would tend to slip and fall and uh, you can end up hurting yourself. So you always want to keep your shop in a real neat, clean uh, state if you can. Um, another thing, we, uh, th th I think this is all the, uh, the PPE components that we'll talk about today, but I, w I wanted to move on. Uh, one thing is uh, uh, the fender covers. I like to wear, put a fender cover over the fender of a car. Uh, to protect the fender of the vehicle as well, uh, not, necessar not, not necessarily or only to, uh, to protect the vehicle, but also to protect you. Sometimes the vehicle can be dirty or soiled and you'll get dirty by doing that. So I always wear these, uh, put these over the car as well. Um, the other thing, um, occasionally I will use uh, a cloth. Uh, th these are actually just old sheets. I bought these at a yard sale. And if you're working independently in a repair shop, these work a lot better than the fender covers do because the fender covers tend to fall off of the fender of the vehicle. And these are soft and they'll lay right over the edge where you want to and you can pack them down in around the car uh, front end or back end or wherever you're working so that you won't, uh, won't get dirty. And I like to use those as well. Um, the, uh, uh, the floor jack, as you can see right here in the front, uh, 
you know, we, we probably all know how to use a floor jack, but one thing that I like to, to um, reiterate and is never, never, ever use a floor jack without a jack stand. You always want to have a jack stand with you. And I, don't, I mean even just for 30 seconds. Do not jack up a car with this and not put a jack stand under the car because there's been so many cases where people have been killed using just the hydraulic jack because the hydraulics can fail without any kind of warning. You get no warning whatsoever and if you're up under the car with just the hydraulic jack, it can fail. And uh, you know, a car weighs anywhere from four to 6,000 pounds and uh, you're not gonna hold it off of you, it's gonna kill you. So it's uh, very, very important that you use a jack stand anytime you use the floor jack. Um, we'll move on now uh, to the fire extinguisher. Uh, some of you know how to use a fire extinguisher. I, I like to keep a fire extinguisher in the shop uh, just, just for the, in, in case there is a fire of some kind. You never know, you, you, if you're working around flammable liquids and, uh, and uh, you know, anything automotive related, you, you know that there is that chance of having a fire. So um, this type of fire extinguisher, this is an ABC fire extinguisher. And uh, uh, ABC means the different types. There's actually A, B, C, and D are the four different types of fire extinguisher. Th this one here is actually uh, a multitasking fire extinguisher, if you will. Um, it covers all three areas. The A uh, segment of it would cover trash, wood, and paper. The B segment will cover liquids, and it even says it on the front of this. The, uh, the C segment covers electrical uh, equipment. So uh, that's what the A, B, and C is. Now the D segment, uh, not many mechanics keep the D one handy, but now some of them do. Uh, it actually covers metals like a, a magnesium and any kind of a metal, because you know metals like that, you don't want to put this A, B, and C uh, material on that type of a fire. So if you have a metal fire in your shop, it would be best to either have a D fire extinguisher or just immediately dial 911 and call the fire department and get them to your area if you have a dangerous fire like that. So, but most shops have this type of fire extinguisher. And the way you use this thing is um, it has a safety lock on it so that it can't, you know, can't be accidentally set off. And you see it's, this is actually double banded. So what you do is you would hold on to it very firmly and grab this steel pin right here and you pull it very hard, jerk the pin out completely so that it, it, it can be used. See, it can't be used right now because it's locked with this pin. But you grab this steel pin and you pull this pin out and then you're ready to aim this at, at a fire and you'll pull the hose off and you turn it and you aim it at the fire. Now, a lot of people don't even know how to aim this hose at a fire. So if you have a fire in your shop, you always want to aim this hose at the base of the fire because at the base of the fire is where the fire originates. If you try to, try to aim it at the top of the fire, you're not going to put it out. So always aim it at the base uh, and and uh, just, just try to have a fire extinguisher handy. Uh, they also have a, a timeout on them. They, li they like for fire extinguishers to be inspected once a month in businesses. But personally, I think you probably could inspect it yourself and look, you can see that on this gauge here, it's in the top end of the green and that's really all they do. You wanna make sure that this gauge reads in the top end of the green all the time. Just you know, glance at it every so often and make sure that it's still good. If it's not, these are refillable. This type here, I believe is a refillable fire extinguisher. Some of your smaller ones you can buy in stores, uh, you throw away. You can get those too as well, and they work just as well in, in an automotive, uh, an independent automotive shop. Uh, uh, but uh, you know, I just happen to have a very nice um, uh, commercial style right here. So uh, uh, that's, uh, one more thing I wanted to uh, talk to you about is uh, I've got over here a, 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 a canister of paint, and uh, it says on the side of this, flammable liquid. So always adhere to, to any of the the safety that's, that's related to the liquids that you use. If you're working with any kind of liquid, you need to know how that liquid's gonna to react to a fire. And uh, that's because if you ended up having a fire in the shop and this was sitting here right close to the fire, you'd wanna to try to get it away from the fire just for the, the sake of, of uh, you know, stopping in the, the fire from expanding you know, and becoming a higher, this, this could be a huge accelerant and make the fire even worse. So we don't want that to happen. It's extremely dangerous. Um, I know there's a lot of things here that I was covering kind of randomly, but I, you know, I just, uh, I just want you to kind of know a little more about safety. Uh, one last thing that I like to talk about, if you'll notice my toolbox here, uh, one thing I like to mention to, to people is, and, and my students as well when I'm teaching is, is uh, you know, when you're, open a drawer of a, when you're opening a drawer of a toolbox, you always want to open one drawer 
and get whatever you're going to get out and close it and then open the next drawer. Never open you know, all the drawers at one time because the danger there is this toolbox could actually tip over. You, all the weight is in the drawers. So if you ended up opening five or six drawers here, you could literally cause the toolbox to tip over on you. And uh, this toolbox right here, uh, uh, I know you can't tell how heavy it is, but for me to load this toolbox on up and take it anywhere, I have to put it on the back of a uh, trailer. We have to have a ramp and, and roll it up on there. You cannot pick it up. It weighs entirely too much. So um, uh, just, just you know, be safe anytime you're doing uh, automotive repair. Always make sure safety is a, a, a part of it. Pay attention to safety. Uh, you know, you just need to have it in the back of your mind all the time when you're working on something that, you know, I want to be safe and I don't want to get hurt. Uh, you know, you don't want to, you know, grab something and pull on it and, and something be in the way where you'd end up hurting yourself and injuring yourself because, you know, yourself, if you injure yourself, you're, uh, uh, you know, you're just going to slow down your work process. So just try to be safe out there and always adhere to safety uh, and, and the safety rules for every piece of equipment that you work with. And that's all I've got today. Thank you.